So you're welcome guys in this space we'll talk about some of the key networks of amount who is using the key network, some of the uh, founders and partners, and then we'll also talk about tokenomics or we'll talk a little about the uh, incentivized testnet and all those information. So if you look at Kiev, Kiev is basically trying to build a data lake. So let me use this example for you to understand. So a data lake is basically a place where you can actually store data and then you can access this data for anything you want to use. Now there are reasons why we want to store data. Probably we want to do analytics or we want to do anything. But as you go through the internet, you discover that history is being wiped off. So pages could be deleted upon maybe personal requests around the website. Or maybe the government issues an ultimatum and says the content you have published uh, is not true. You should take it down and all manner of things. So the data can get lost. To prevent that, um, it is needed that we have permanence. So what keeps them, as you can see in this chain, any election can be connected to Kiev. And then Kiev is not the platform that stores data. No. We have our wave that does the storing of data in a more economic way. I think you can store data in payments like 250 years or more. And then you are sure your data will be stored forever. But it's very hard to like plug in, pull in, and the rest of them. So Kiev is like a network that is leveraging the technology of our wave to do um, the data story. So you plug your data in from your blockchain or non-blockchain APIs. Kiev takes all those information, stores it on our wave. Now when you want to retrieve your information, you can use the Kiev layer to retrieve your information. And all that. So, with that, there is some level of uh, permanence. So, you could be saying who is using Kiev? Many network names, like some likes of Nier, Silicon, Solana. And if you look at how big Solana, uh, Solana is, Solana is actually storing its chain, uh, its chain data on how it has it how important how it is, and all that. Now, in the network, there are some few. Every network has a participant. We have token holders, or well, those that make the um, the network good. So this network is a platform to actually store data. So this is how it works. There is something called pools. So a pool, you can basically say, if you are using a blockchain, so a pool can be blockchain layer one blockchain, like as you can see on the screen, or not layer 2 or non-blockchain so let's take for example Solana was just not to bootstrap Solana right that is a pool we can say okay we want to store the data on Solana so that is a pool after you do that after you create a proposal to do that there are people called formulas so if the funders are basically the one who are going to deposit the necessary number of tokens to incentivize people to upload data using the APIs of Solana through our give onto our with right. So the ones that have the blockchain. Uh, or wants data to be created uh, um, to, start, to start for that blockchain, they will deposit something, which is what we used to incentivize um, uh, the funders. They will deposit. It's what we used to incentivize people now running the nodes, and then the nodes can kick off. So after the funders have deposited, a few funders, uh, as you can see, here, you can have a minimum for you amount. You can have maximum uh, funders, and then can have uh, fund uh, for this slot and the rest of it. The next thing will now be uploaders. So what uploaders basically do, they are the ones that will take the data and then upload it to the network. So we can 
the proposal can choose I want X, Y, Z number of uploaders to upload data onto this particular program. Now, you are uploading data from your blockchain. If we go to something like eTask, for example, supposing we need to see Ethereum data. So, we will have an uploader. They say this is the latest transaction that will upload the latest transaction onto our with true key. Now, but we will not take the award for it. We have a pool of validators. So validators basically short. It's okay. You invest this transaction knowledge and all the data about this. I'll be sure that you did the right thing. So when validators check and say, okay, the data that was imputed that was uploaded was uploaded correctly, then the transaction uh, sorry, okay, we, the data is now stored permanently to ARIF. Now, why will validators come into the network? And there are very few reasons. Now, um, what would cost a validator? It could be storage processes. Maybe there are faults with the programming and that it can cause um, problems. But that thing again is the transmission. So um, the process of transmission of course will be fought then. We can also have things like uh, interception by malicious actors. And then um, it can also be intentional by the person that's uploading data to uh, screw up the community. So the people are strong the backers are people that are actually using the you know, investing experience. It's just one of Cosmos and uh, now, let's go to the tokenomics. So, what will the token be used for? Governance, we can propose, we can create pools, we can vote on pools using the key of token for funding, like I talked about. So, a pool has been created, we can use it to fund. We can stake if you want to run nodes for. A particular pool and then you can delegate if you don't have the time the resources or the number of tokens and just delegate to any particular pool and then so this is the token distribution and we just get this and that you can do a study about that later and just to cut this video do you have any device testing you already know what it's in the best testing we see before the network launches and uh, the, the way they do the integration events. If you come here, there will be a token generation event if we go to the roadmap, sorry, in the next few, uh, maybe the next quarter or something like that, then there will be this list in the minute launch. So before you launch minute, you have to have a testnet. Right, the team have had test nets before, but now it's getting closer to serious stuff. So there is a need for an incentivized test net. And this is where they are launching Corella. So Corella is a test net that to reward the community, you can see, with 2% of the entire supply. And it's both technical and uh, non technical task. So if you're a technical person, you can run nodes, you can uh, find bugs, you can do a manner of things. You are welcome to this uh, testnet. Even if you are not technical, if you can create memes, if you can tweet, like uh, it's said to say, yeah, retweet content, you can spread the word. You are good to go. If you can create video tutorials, memes, and just contribute, then you are also good to go. So in the next video, we'll talk about um, how you can participate in the testnet. So for now, peace.